Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm Chief Sweet and I'm out in the wilds of Oklahoma, southeast Oklahoma that is. And I'm gonna teach you how to get some wood and rocks. This is where I get mine. This is my childhood home. I lived here six years ago, I don't live here now. But I come out here and gather rocks and wood from the wild. I'll show you how to get that, how to make sure it's safe and doesn't have anything on it, and the safe wood to get, and some rocks. So let's get into it, shall we? Well, this is what I like to roll with, as well as some good boots. I like to roll with a little saw saw, a five gallon bucket. I put the rocks in there, limbs in there, what have you. Okay, so one of the trees I like to get is oak trees. It's reptile safe. You don't have to worry about it. You can cut it straight off the tree. This is an oak tree behind me. You can tell by the leaves, very distinct leaves. And you can also use this for bioactive terrariums. This is one of my favorite trees to cut down. I said it's spring, it's hot, it's humid. It's 85 degrees, 80% humidity right now. I'm burning alive. But this tree right here is a great tree. When you do cut, I cut off the limbs, the live limbs from like the top. Don't cut the tree down. Just cut off a limb, a two, something you like, and move on to another tree. The tree is good for the forest. It makes sure it's, it's healthy. And after you cut the limb off the tree, you can go ahead and take the leaves off as well, dry them out in the sun, and bam, you have leaf litter for your terrarium or bioactive and it's all in one, super easy to get, super simple. You could use a hacksaw to cut them down. I do have a power tool behind me, little battery power tool, because I'm not about to be out here in this Oklahoma heat cutting it off. Also to remember, springtime, if you do get leaf litter, there's tons of leaf litter all over the ground for me. Being springtime, ticks are out. So if you do get leaf, I usually like to get my stuff in the wintertime because nothing's out. It's easy, you don't have to worry about anything, you don't have to worry about snakes, you don't have to worry about nothing. But ticks do come out in springtime, so I will say if you are gathering leaf litter in the springtime, definitely bake it. You know, put it in the oven for 250 an hour and whatever is going to be on that is going to be dead. Or you can set it outside most likely. If you sit in the sun, it's going to run away from that. But let's get to cutting, shall we? Find on uh, rocks as well. Oh my goodness. Now let's talk about trees to stay away from. You see this tree right here. It looks pretty good. It looks like drift would look, would look amazing in an enclosure. Stay away from something like this because it is dead. It's lying on the ground. It most, most likely has termites all inside of it. And this was once a cedar tree. Speaking of cedar trees, these trees right here, these evergreen looking trees, you want to stay away from these trees as well. Do not get these type of trees and put them in your enclosure. So right here is a beautiful oak tree but as you can see right here i really like these limbs right here and what i mean by this take a piece of the tree i would chop right there and leave the rest there i've actually come this tree before and i chopped it off right there so as you can tell the tree's still alive and it's going to still grow if i chop right here and just cut that off and that's the only piece of tree i got it's still going to be happy and healthy but i'm going to take almost every single limb from this tree and just chop it off there cut off little extra pieces and divide it up into a bunch of basking or even climbing uh, limbs for my tanks and terrariums. Here I am gonna go crazy with the hacksaw and I'm gonna show you how I chop it down. I simply go as close as I can to the giant tree trunk. Once it's chopped off, I drag it to the side and you can see all the extra tree limbs on top. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim it up. I'm gonna try to get all the like really skinny long pieces of tree limbs out of there. Now don't just chunk these to the side. I am chunking them to the side, but I'm the reason I'm doing it is because I'm, I'm piling them up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the leaves of this tr from this tree, dry them out, and it's gonna be leaf litter for stuff at home. But as you can tell, I'm just really just trimming it up and I'm gonna get it to a, a nice little kind of smaller tree, but I'm also then gonna cut it up again. So it does look like a big tree branch, but I'm gonna cut it into smaller pieces Pieces, so that way I can put it in other enclosures. So here it is cut up and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut it into three pieces and from those three pieces as you see right here I can cut them into even smaller pieces so that one tree limb is like up to seven branches for mini enclosures. And like I said once you pile up all those little tiny tree branches with all those leaves just go ahead and grab the leaves and start pulling them off and putting them in a bucket. Okay, so to harvest the rocks, forgive me if I'm sweating, I've been hiking. I like to go along creek beds, because that's like the best rocks. You get like the flat rocks, That's I love to get those. And if you tell right here, I'm in a creek right there. I'm just going to follow this and start picking up rocks with my five-gallon bucket. This is where I get all my rocks, although you can get rocks anywhere. If you see a rock that you like, just pick it up, take it home, maybe scrub it off. It has dirt on there. You don't have to. Um, I get rocks everywhere. Anytime I see a rock that I like, I'm picking it up. As you can see right here, this is a creek, and it goes deep into the woods i'm just kind of on the outer edge and i just love to come by and pick these rocks up i mean look at this there's tons of rocks especially that one right there see this right here is a good looking rock done taking that one home with me look at that perfect rock love it putting that in the bucket <laughs> done see and that's how it's done it's also to point out 
how you have to be careful. You see that right there, Steve? You want to sit down and there's a snake up in there. That's a perfect area for a snake to hide in. Man, if you sat down with your ankles out and he felt a little threatened because he is backed up into a corner, he may strike. You just got to be aware of your surroundings when in the woods around rocks like this. This is a haven for snakes, lizards, tarantulas, anything. They all love to hide around this area type stuff like this. Perfect for that. Human uh, pollution everywhere, can't escape it. So you do have to be careful when herping if you have venomous snakes in your area. Remember, snakes are more afraid of you than you are afraid of them. Every time I've been herping, the only time, I, I don't think I've ever been attacked by a snake ever. Every time I see a snake, it goes the exact same way every time. I take off one way, he takes off the other, or he just takes off. So one thing about loading the rocks up is it gets extremely heavy. I'm back in my car, thank God. But I will advise to not load up on a lot. I loaded up on a lot. I had to walk from, I don't even know if you can see that, like halfway up that little mountain looking area and I am spent. I am so hot. I got bit by a mosquito on my freaking forehead. It's time to go home, take a shower and show you what I got. So upon arriving back and taking a shower, here I am looking at the footage and this is the haul I got. These are all the rocks. They're actually very good sized rocks, like maybe like three of my hands put together. As you can tell right there, look how big that rock is. I got a couple of those, a bunch of smaller rocks as well. I got some gravel. This is from my driveway, it's just part of the land. It's kind of gravelly out there. You can see it in this video right here. And wood. As you can see, all the wood I got, and you can also tell that I got this wood and I do this all the time because it's also the wood in my bearded dragon tank right behind all of this. Now with my tree limbs, I pretty much just put them outside on a black tabletop directly in the sun for two days and just let them roast. Anything's on there is just gonna run off. And that's all I do. A lot of people bake the wood. You can if you want to, I do not do that. With my rocks, I just get really hot water and get the scrubber I got from Dollar Tree and just scrub it clean. And just like that, it's that easy to take some from outside and bring it in and use it in your enclosure. I've been doing this for years. There's been like a stigma lately that things are like, oh my goodness, to get stuff from outside, you don't do that. I feel like that's just a scam brought up by like the reptile industry. You know, if you slap anything with like, you have anything, lamp, whatever, you slap reptile on it, it's 10 times the price. Uh, conspiracy me says that, but I've been doing this for a long time and all my animals are totally fine. So if you uh, have any questions, drop those down below. If you liked the video, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.